disciples that they were to pray that God's kingdom come and His will be done. If if it auto, if the if all of God's will is automatically done, then there would be no reason for prayer, right? Because you know prayer would be a waste of time. Why pray about it if God's already taken care of it all? But what what it is is God's given man authority in the earth. And so what we do is, as we pray, we're, we're opening up the door for God to step in to circumstances, step, step into situations where, where you know, uh, we're inviting him in, into, into our life, into other people's lives as we're praying. And so, but the Lord gives prayer burdens. He puts, he puts people on your heart. He puts situations on your heart. And we're going to be talking about that today. And, you know, prayer burdens give us a passion and motivate us to persevere in prayer. <laughs> Victory in the realm of prayer comes as we cast our cares upon the Lord and pray until the burden lifts and we receive a note of victory. There's that, that note of victory, it can be a peace in your heart. It can be a song in your heart. It can be joy. But you need to pray through. You need to pray until you got the victory. A lot of times... People pray and then they go away and, and they're they're in fear because they, they haven't invested the time to actually pray through. If you don't pray out these prayer burdens, they become anxieties. All right, they turn into anxieties. You, we need to pray out the prayer burdens that God gives. Prayer burdens are God's battle plans. See, God, what He does is He'll highlight a person or a situation, he'll put a, a burden in your heart for that situation. That's, that's God showing you, this is where I want you to focus your prayer. It's targeted prayer. God targets, he highlights things. They're, they're, they're targeted by, by God through prayer burdens. And so we need to be keeping our hearts open. When the Lord puts someone on your heart, it's not to gossip about them. Okay? If the Lord puts the pastor on your heart, it's not the gossip about them. It's to pray for them. Uh, or, or other people. We need to be praying. And, and the Lord will... And what the Lord does is He entrusts us. See, the reason why He puts people on your heart and puts burdens on your heart like that is because He is trusting you to pray it through. Amen. He's trusting you to pray it through. And that's why it's so critical that we have an understanding of prayer burdens and what their, what their purpose is and, and the importance of them. Because... It, it, it will transform not only your life, but it will transform others around you as you submit to God and yield to Him. Uh, Brother Hagen talked about the revivals, the healing revivals of 1947 through 56. And that, that revival, I mean, it had several uh, ministers that, that we have heard about. And, and really, you know, Brother Hagen came to, to um, really... His ministry was highlighted through that time. It was through through that that uh, time of the healing uh, ministry, the, the healing uh, revival, actually. Oral Roberts, Jack Coe, Gordon Lindsay, many others. Through through that healing, that, that that mighty wonderful time of healing. I mean, you could practically sneeze on someone and get them healed back then. I don't know what it was, but but a lot of the stories that Brother Hagen talks about these profound healings. They were manifested during those times, just really powerful times. Now, people have gotten healed at other times, too, of course, but this was just such a, a powerful time that people could get healed very easily. It, it wasn't challenging at all. It was just like an anointing in the air for healing. And, um, but, but, you know, the revival started in 1947, but the burden for that revival started four years earlier. It actually started in 1943. And as people started getting a burden and a, and a hunger for prayer and praying for revival and praying for God's healing power, their hearts, what God did was he highlighted and people participated with God. And he, they prayed out that burden. And as they prayed out that burden, things started to happen. People just started to get mirac miraculously healed and transformed. Uh, just a mighty revival happened. God wants more of these kind of things. As a matter of fact, God wants, he doesn't want ebbs and flows. He wants to just bring in this end time harvest. Amen. 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 And so, you know, the Lord will be putting burdens on our hearts for the lost. He'll be putting burdens on our hearts for our brothers and sisters in Christ. There's things that are going on 
in people's lives. And God cares about them. And he puts them burdens on our hearts so we can pray out God's will for people. Yes. Amen? Amen? Praise God. In Psalm 55, 22, it says, Cast your, your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Cast your burden. So when God puts a burden on you, you're, you're to put it back on him. That's, that's how it works. God puts a burden on you and you give it back to him. And you know what I've noticed with whenever I'm praying is a lot of times God will put a stronger burden on me and then I just give it back to him. It's like we're just giving it back and forth to each other. Giving it back and forth. And what's happening is the will of God's being accomplished because we're we're praying out the will of God for individuals, for nations, for missionaries, for, for people who are hurting. And and God's putting those prayer burdens on us, not so that we can be burdened but so that we will be motivated to pray them out. Yes. Amen? Yes. So it's, it's just really critical as a church body that we understand that. It'll, it'll, it'll save people's lives. It will. Amen. It'll literally change their lives, save their lives. Let's look at one here. Hannah prayed. She prayed out her burden in, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, starting in verse 9. 1 Samuel 1, 9. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? 1 Samuel 1 9. Alright, we're going to read down to 18. So Hannah arose after she had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul. I mean, she was really, her heart was, you, you, could, you could put it this way, her heart was just broken. Bitterness of soul, just, she was crying out in anguish. And prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant, and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. So she was praying, and you know, God can hear your prayers. You don't have to yell to the rooftop. You know, God's not nervous and he's, he's not deaf either. So, so even quiet prayers, you don't have to always be loud. I like to pray loud, amen. But there's times when you can also pray quietly as well. Amen. They both work, amen. amen. You know, God, he, he lives in you. He doesn't just live in heaven. You don't have to shout so loud that he has to hear you up there. He can hear you, amen. Praise God. So um, it says, now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, Lord. No, my Lord. That's what I'm trying to get Norma to say that to me. <laughs> didn't, didn't, you know, didn't Sarah call Abraham Lord? You know, but it's not working. Did you talk to her before? Okay, so she said, No, my Lord, I am, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have, I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. That's, that's prayer. You're pouring out your soul. You're not just flipping about it. You are pouring out your soul. You're praying with everything you have. Passionate prayer. You're supplicating. Do, do, not, do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you your petition, which you have, answered, which you have asked of him. And she said, 
Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So she went, she went away, and she was blessed. And um, it was just really important. She prayed her heart out. There was a burden on her heart, and she prayed it out. And, and you know, that prayer got answered. Samuel was a result of it. You know, we would not have a book of Samuel if that prayer was not prayed. That's right. Because there wouldn't have been a Samuel to write a book about. That Samuel was, was a profound prophet of God. He really made an impact on Israel. He, he, he anointed their first two kings with oil. He's the one who, who prayed and, and, and brought them in into their kingship. He was obedient. He was mightily used of God. But it all started with a prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, think about this. How many times do you think that you're praying for one person, you don't realize you could be impacting a whole nation? You could be impacting a family. You could be impacting people. Just one prayer. One passionate prayer. Amen. One burden that you prayed out is going to make a major impact. You, you know... A lot of things we're never even going to know until we get on the other side of glory. When, when we get to heaven, all of a sudden we'll see those things. Women in nursing homes, men in nursing homes that think that they can't do anything, they're, but they're praying, they're making major impacts in the kingdom, and they're going to be rewarded for it. How much more should we be doing something? Amen? Amen. Praise God. We need to be praying out the, these prayer burdens. You know, um, grandmothers have prayed for their ch grandchildren. I'm sure grandfathers have too. And they have gone on to be with the Lord, but their prayers are still in effect. Amen. Their prayers, Amen. God has not forgotten their prayers. Right. Man, I'll tell you, the prayers that you've prayed are not just laying there on a shelf collecting dust. Right. They're active. They are doing something. Yes. Your prayers yes. have power. Yes. Amen. And your prayers can affect generations. Amen. Generations Amen. to come. You are a vital part of what God is doing in this earth, but you've got to pray it out. You've got to pray it out. Suppl the word supplication means an intense, earnest entreaty, a humble request. It's a heartfelt prayer. It's a heartfelt prayer. It's not something that's just flippant. It's, it's kind of like the idea of approaching for a favor. You're approaching God for a favor. And it's not a casual you owe it to me attitude in prayer. A real flippant thing. It's it's a passionate. You're you're going before the very throne of God. You you're going and you're you're going to the throne of grace with boldness. Because and you're not leaving until you get that. You remember last week we talked about the bread? Amen. The the man who shows up and he needs three loaves of bread. He didn't go home until he had what he needed. Amen. You, you're, when you approach God, God wants you to be aggressive like that. He, he didn't put these things in the Word of God for, for no reason at all. He wants you to be aggressive for other people's lives. He wants you to, to say, you know, I'm not moving until I see a, that person touched and changed. And God, He loves that. He's not insulted by that. He loves that. He loves, see, see the Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please Him. For those who come to Him must come to must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. Amen. And that's what God wants. Yes. He wants us to passionately seek him. God answered Hannah's prayer. She was praying, and, and man, her heart was full of anguish. She's just praying out. And, and God was not insulted by that prayer. I'll tell you, some of the most powerful prayers are just pouring out your, your guts to God. Amen. Just pouring them out. Just, just your heart just being broken. For somebody or some situation. It's critical that we pray out these prayer burdens. Pray until the burden goes away. Pray until the burden goes away. Amen. 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 And if God puts it back on you, then that's time to pray it out again. Amen. Amen. And just keep Amen. praying it out. It's, it's God's way of saying, we're not finished with this situation yet. Amen. Amen. So, um, I can remember one time, whenever I was, um, this was before I ever went to Rama, and it was, um, I was, I was in the Navy, I was a medical, I was a corpsman, I would come home on the weekends, and, and one weekend I came home, my dad, he, he was a truck driver at that time, and uh, some of you know the story, it was just such a powerful, powerful story, I gotta tell it again, but uh, 
so, so I, I'm at home. I go to sleep. It's 2 in the morning. My dad's out on the road truck driving, and, and they don't get a lot of sleep out there. And uh, I got woken up in the middle of the night. I mean, just wide awake. And I saw a picture of my dad, right? right in, I could just, it was almost like it was a TV or camera or, or TV channel where I, I just saw a picture of my dad. Just It just showed up right in front of my eyes. Call it a mini vision. I don't know what you want to call it, but I knew who to pray for. And, and all of a sudden, I just started to pray. I was praying in the Spirit. And I, it was just, the, 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 the prayer was just gushing out of me. I mean, just flowing like a river. Just, just like, you know, the oil wells, when they strike oil, it just like gushes out. That's the way my prayer was. It was just flowing. And, and I just started praying for my father, and I was just praying and praying and praying. And I don't even remember quitting. I just woke up the next morning. So I must have fallen asleep while I was praying or something. I don't know. Obviously, I prayed through. Um, the next morning, my mom, you know, I got up, and my mom was uh, talking to me. She said, I just got the phone with your father. And he told me that around 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, he was driving his tractor trailer. And he fell asleep behind the wheel. And he was just ready to go over into an embankment. And he he actually heard my voice. I don't know. I don't understand everything how prayer works all the time. I just know we gotta pray. And, and so he he heard my voice saying, "Dad, wake up, wake up, Dad." And and it woke him up. And he he turned the truck away. And he's with us to this day. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know. But what if I wouldn't have prayed? You know, how many things go wrong because we're not praying? We need to pray until the burden goes away. <laughs> and so, you know, and then I've shared other incidents with my dad, you know. Last week I shared about the, the, the massive heart attack that he had and how God delivered him. Something about my dad and I, I don't know. Just Every time something goes on, my mom calls me up, hey, you got to pray for your dad. And, and, and then she gets upset because then I don't find anything wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But praise God, God prayed. You know, God prayed for. Him. Glory to God. So, um, you know, God is good. God is good. So, so we need to pray until the burden goes away. Let's look at Paul and Silas. Let's go to Acts chapter sixteen. Jump on over here. We're going to be talking about prayer over the next several weeks because it's just uh, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to prayer. And we're not even going to cover everything, but we're going to do our best to cover as much as we can. But in Acts chapter 16, sixteen, we're going to be looking here at uh, actually verse 16, 16, 16. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, a certain slave girl possessed, see, Paul was a what? He was a prayer. And he, as they went to prayer, a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her master as much profit by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace and to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. They weren't worried about that. They were worried about their income. You know, and they teach us customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure, securely. Having received such a charge. He put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. Now, here's the thing. But at midnight, 
That's the key. But at midnight, see, midnight for them could be a, a, a different kind of midnight for you. It's the darkest time. What kind of midnight have you been through? God is and God is your light, even in the midnight. Amen. Amen. He's your hope, even even in that situation. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were they were praying and singing song, singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And then there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose, and the keeper of the prison rushed out. He was ready to take his own life. And Paul spoke out, and he said, Do yourself no harm. Do yourself no harm. We're all still here. And, he, and, and, and the, the, the prisoner, or the prison guard, he, him and his whole family ended up getting saved through this situation. But Paul and Silas, they prayed, and then they got another victory. They prayed, and then they sung, sung hymns and songs to the Lord. It's, it's that important. See, we need to pray until we get a note of victory. Until we, we know that, man, I got a peace, I got a joy. I know that I know that I know that I have the petitions that I've asked. We need to, it's so vital that we understand that. You know, the, the, the prayer came first, and the hymns and, and, and songs came second. Why? Because the prayer was answered. They already had it, and 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 the the, the the then their prayer or their their worship got interrupted by an earthquake. That's a good way to get it interrupted. When God's in the quake, that's a good thing. Amen. 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 People got set free. People got delivered. Amen. Isn't God good? And, and you know, in Philippians four six and seven it says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer by prayer and supplication." With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. Now, see, be, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. So when you have a burden, you need to pray it out. See, burdens that are not prayed out become anxieties. Because you begin to worry about it. See, you get the burden, and, and instead of praying and, tr and putting it casting that burden on the Lord, you keep it to yourself, and now you're worried about it. And you're, you're walking around all worried. See, when you pray, when you cast that care on the Lord, it's His. Trust Him with it. And the Bible says that, that we're supposed to do it with thanksgiving. That's, that's me saying, you know what, I prayed for it, and Father, I thank you that you are taking care of it. Yeah. Amen. You're my source. You're taking care of the situation. So therefore, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard my heart. And mine in Christ. I, I have peace because I've given that burden to the Lord. See, it's not anxiety anymore. It's a burden that I've presented to the Lord. I cast my cares upon the Lord because He cares for me. Amen? Amen. And He cares for you. And, and you know, I appreciate people who pray for me. And, and, and I know that, that you appreciate me praying back for you as well. See, it's See, what you sow is what you reap. You, anyone in here who wants prayer needs to pray. Amen? When you pray for people, God will put Amen. a burden for you on somebody else. Amen. 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 Well, it was pretty quiet in here. <laughs> Are you all praying? Is that what it is? <laughs> see, see, confidence comes from, from knowing that you have the petitions that you've asked for. In 1 John 5, 14, through 15, 14 and 15, it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his what? His will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. See, knowing that you've been heard is also knowing that you've received. Knowing, and, and, and the big part of it is this, knowing what the will of God is. When you know what God's will is, it's time to pray it out. And then and then expect the, the manifestation to come. And so, you know, it says here that that when when you pray and you know you've been heard, then you know you have. Amen? It centers around his will. Find out what his will is and pray it out. Amen. Jesus, he prayed through and actually secured his victory through prayer. He was 
pre-prayered. Amen? Pre-prayered. He, he was prepared. See, see, even Jesus knowing, and he told his disciples over and over again, I'm going to be put to death, and I'm going to rise up in three days. He still went to prayer about it. And the Bible says that he was actually heard because of his